everyone, so I've got another Most Haunted series review and this is series 1. Now I've had this box set for about, let me work this out, 6 years possibly, but I've only just got around to watching the complete thing, so I was kind of like, can't believe it took me that long. So as usual, we'll take a look at the actual box set itself, and I've written down loads and loads of scribbly notes on the episodes inside, which we'll go through. We'll try and do this quickly, but it might be a lengthy video because there are 17, 19, 19 episodes in here. So the box set itself is a typical green. This is one of the older styles, thick cardboard there, and this is a 15. So I have to point that out there. And on the back, you have a map with all the locations. Then on the inside, you've got a vet and Derek. Definitely prefer a vet with longer hair. And then, actually in here, is the um, tickets I used to have. I bought, my dad bought me tickets when I was in 2007 to go and see Derek Cora alive, but I was grounded, so I didn't get to go. But I'm going in November. And then, when you open this up, this is absolutely massive. You have the discs going along there, and there's about four on it. That one's in my DVD player just now. I was re-watching one of the episodes. That goes on, and then on the back, I'm going to do this. On the back you've got the locations and all the brief descriptions there. So I mean it is huge but it's, it's a nice, you know, it folds up quite condensely so that's kind of helpful. Alright, so I'm going to have to leave this open aren't I so I can actually see all the episodes I've only written down the numbers. Right, so episode one is Applehampton Hall. Um, really, really good starter episode for the series I think. The, uh, the bet I like the best was when Derek saw the monkey and the dog was like, you know, Where's the monkey? <laughs> so I love that bit. Um, when the cot was rocking on its own, I thought that was quite fascinating. Um, wasn't a massively intense episode, but it was very interesting. So it was good. Number two is Chillingham Castle. Now Chillingham isn't that far away from me, so I was kind of like, if this is a good episode, I might go there. It was an alright episode. The bit um, I liked best, well, two bits. I think when the boy the story about the boy in the bedroom wall was kind of quite an emotional story, kind of really fascinating and when the white box moved when Carl was doing the vigil that was the sort of two most interesting bits. Apart from that it wasn't overly spectacular but it was a good watch. Number three is the Ostrich Inn. Now the ones that are set in inns and pub houses and coaching inns always seem to be the best ones for some reason, I don't know why. This one is no exception. Um, <laughs> okay, the bit I really loved the best, which is ironic, is when Yvette and Jason were um, sitting on the benches and um, doing sort of pre-ghost hunt chat and this random cat just sprung out from behind Yvette, quite in the distance, so it would have been like far away that way, and just stood there. Now that cat reminded me exactly of my Hilda, and Hilda used to do that as well, she would spring out of nowhere. If you watch some of my older videos back, you'll see her doing that. I just thought that was cute. Um, the the evil landlord, I think, was quite a quite a sinister sounding character. Him and his wife were kind of kind of an evil thing. <laughs> when Derek screamed Thomas when he was in the middle of talking, he just goes Thomas, and Yvette nearly you know crapped herself. But I thought it was very funny. Poor Yvette, but absolutely brilliant. I think the, the character of Thomas turned out to be quite an interesting soul, somebody I'd like to know more about. Um, when Derek was channeling was doing the channeling of the oil burning when he was being James Henry. It was kind of kind of kind of scary. There was no clear transition between Derek being Derek and Derek channeling James Henry, so I was kind of to start off with I didn't even know he was channeling somebody. So I was kinda of like, what? But then I was kinda of sorrowful when he was talking well when James Henry was talking about how he was burned in the big pot of oil and it was it, it, it was it was a shame. Um when Carl went up to the loft, I thought that was really kind of... Carl's very adventurous. He will say yes to anything. There's one episode where he went down like a drain pipe on his own. I'm like, you're crazy, but very, very brave. That's great. Um, like, when he talks to himself, when he's doing little vigils and things, I think it's so adorable. But yeah, this one was just a really, really, really good episode. I really enjoyed it and thought it was fantastic from start to finish. Number four is Sutra Lighthouse, which is... The tap stripping. Um, <laughs> Sutra Lighthouse again is right next to me. My sister, she's six. She went there last year, I think, and she never stops going on about it. So I was like, this better be a good episode. It was rubbish. Honestly, from start to finish, I was bored to tears. I was like, I, I don't have anything to tell you about it. I just thought it was 
really seriously rubbish. Maybe I'm not a fan of lighthouses, maybe it would have been better if it was somewhere else. But honestly, I didn't think it was very good. Number five is the Avery Stone of Avery, Avery, Avery Stones and the Red Lion. I really, really like this one a lot. Um, the story about the woman in the well, um, how she was trapped in the well, I thought was kind of an emotional bit and kind of serious. Wells do scare me. You know, sometimes you will get a well which has been covered up and you look down and it goes on for miles and you think, imagine if you fell down that blooming thing. That would be so scary because when you're younger, it happens in cartoons. I think there was an episode where, where oh, what show? there was a show anyway where a kid fell down the well and they managed to get him back out. The well was probably about as steep as this room. But wells, when you actually see them, are a lot deeper and it's kind of kind of scary. Yeah. Um, if it was a little scared, bless her in that. Um, when Carl was scratched, I was kind of like, okay, that's disgusting. Actually, ironically, there is a scratch on my back. I'm not going to show you it, but it's about there, sort of there, sort of in line with my lower rib, but on the spine, and I have no idea how it got there. I was like, oh, creepy. But that was just a random fact for you. Um, also, when we were talking about the pagan circles and the stones, I found that really fascinating because you guys know what I'm like with paganism and Wiccan. That I thought was brilliant. So, it, a really, really good episode. Yeah, I wanted definitely recommend to any most haunted fan looking for a good episode. Beep, turn the page. Number six is um, Colleen Castle, which I was really looking forward to. I really liked the castle ones, plus it was an airshare, which was nice. Um, yeah, this one turned out to be a really, really good episode as well. The, the, the story about Donald McGregor, who was the piper, who was told to go and play his pipes in the tunnel for a bet, and he never returned, I thought was really fascinating. I'd like to know more about him. Um, I think he's not a bad soul, I don't think. I, I don't know if there's much history behind that character, but I think I'd like to know more about him. I find him quite fascinating. The the orbs near that picture frame when it was just the girls, the orbs were huge. Um, and then you got the, the starting stage. If um, I was going to say something there, but I really can't remember what I was going to say. We'll pretend that I've said it and we'll move on. But yeah, really, really good episode. Definitely one of my favourites and I like saying Colleen Castle. There's just something about that which I really, 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 really like. Number seven is Derby Jail or when I was 12, Derby Goal. I used to watch this one a lot. This is one of the earliest episodes I remember. However, I was terrified of this episode when I first saw it when I was like 12 or something. This series was first out in 2002. I started watching it in 2004. I was petrified of this episode. Having watched it now, I'm not scared at all. It's a fantastic episode, one of my all-time favourites, but it's not scary. Um, the fact that the, the, the trigger object, the cross, had moved and they actually... For the first time, we saw the object move on camera. You know, sometimes something will move and we miss it on camera. We actually saw this, but the camera was only wide enough to see the paper. We couldn't see... For all we know, there was somebody with strings or something giving it a tug. Odds of that... I don't know, the non-believers will say that there were strings or something. The believers, like myself, will say it's highly possible that something did move the cross. That's the first time a trigger object, object had been moved. If somebody from the crew had moved it, why don't they move it in future series? Yep, yeah, I believe. Um, poor Yvette, when she totally just broke down in tears, and she, she felt sick and then she started crying, hysterically, I was like, that's such a shame, because she didn't know why, it was just sort of the the emotions of the jail getting to her, I thought it was quite upsetting and quite, quite a story. Um, then you have the character of Noah Bullock who had dodged the hanging by doing a deal. I thought that was quite, quite an interesting character. I would have liked to have known more about him. They said they had the smell of roses in there. I think that that, that sort of there would have been kind of interesting to walk into a room and smell something. I mean, some of us will have that. I, I was sitting yesterday and I could smell at work we have the scented teddy bears, that smell of cherries, and all of a sudden I could smell it. Now I haven't been working for four days, I don't think. So I was like, why can I smell these bears all of a sudden? It was weird. But I think the smell of roses would have been quite a fascinating one if that is true. Um, then I tried the automatic writing. I'm a big fan and big believer of automatic and psychic writing. I really, really love that. It was a shame they didn't get anything, but it was fascinating to watch regardless. Um, as I said, not really an episode that I remembered to be but still good. Number eight is um, the Aldrich Underground Station. I was really, really looking forward to this one. The station was originally called The Strand, built in 1907, um, and it's built on the site of a demolished theatre. So it's said that a woman, the leading lady of that theatre, now haunts the station. 
um, a veteran Jason and some of the others actually had on World War II clothes to kind of reenact the scene. So apparently if you reenact it and wear a fancy dress from a certain time period, the fabrication of the walls will kind of project historic, historical scenes for you. Um, whether you believe that or not, I don't know. I do believe it. Um, which is kind of like paranormal time travel, which is a really great sensation. I love the thought of that. Um, so we had a couple of ghost stars picked up on. The first one was Margaret Estelle Bryce, or Bright, he wasn't quite sure, is an elderly lady who saved a man in um, one of the tube stations further down. Um, she actually was electrocuted, she died on the line, which I thought was kind of, you know, sad. Then you had Alice Humphreys and a man named Tom. Both of those I thought were kind of fascinating characters, would have liked to have dug a bit deeper into them. Um, you had the story of the subterraneans, the half people, half half um, animals, which I thought were kind of Megan. Um, a few things here. Jason was so scared, which I thought was brilliant because he's normally not very scared. He's normally quite, you know, upbeat, and he he is a skeptic. He is he takes a scientific approach. Um, so it was weird for him to be quite scared. I have to admit, if I was walking through the dark tunnels of the tube stations, I would be scared. Um, Derek was so excitable. What I love when Derek gets really excited, when he gets a happy spirit, shall we say, when he gets the positive energies and you know the spirits are recalling really happy stories to him and the spirits are really nice people. Derek gets so excited and I really love that and I love his enthusiasm. I think he's just fantastic with what he does. And as I said, the whole concept of time slip, <coughs> sorry, something I'd like to know a lot more about and sort of delve deeper into. And um, yeah, so that was a really great one. Then we have number nine, which is number nine, yes, which is um, Treasure Holt. Um, it was an alright episode. I found some bits of it fascinating. You had the story of Uncle Percy and how he came in the window and then went up the stairs. Um, the monk called Simon. And they talked about paganism a bit. The couple who worked there once. Sorry, the dogs running up the stairs. When I'm talking about paranormal things, I do get a bit jittery. Um, the couple who murdered guests, again that's kind of very similar to um, the Ostrich Inn, kind of similar story, how the landlady and landlord murdered the guests, but never mind. Um, when Derek channeled Uncle Percy, Uncle Percy refused, it's a dog, refused to believe he was dead. I thought that was kind of, you know, when, when you die are you going to, I'd love to, I don't want to know, but I'd love to know what it feels like when you're dead, do you understand you're dead? I don't know, it's kind of, kind of hard. And they also did a seance which I thought was, it wasn't that good, but it was good to see them doing the seance. Then you have number 10, beep, turn the page. Number 10 is Drury Lane Theatre. How long is this video? Crikey, it's long. Drury Lane Theatre I was really looking forward to. I am a big theatre goer, I love theatre, I love being on the stage, very much feel at home in that environment. So for me this one's going to be very fascinating. Um, you have the grey man who walks in the upper circles. Um, then you have a story of Charles Macklin killed Arnold Woodrow and he also put a stick in Hallam's eye, which is disgusting. So this character, but we seem to see that Charles Macklin wasn't actually a bad guy, he was just overtaken by anger and lashed out without thinking. So I wasn't really too sure what to think of that character because he didn't seem evil when Derek was talking to him, he just seemed misled, shall we say. Um, the whole, when the seat was down, um, I don't know why I'm doing this, when was it was a Stuart who was sitting on a seat and then he put it up. Do you know the, like, the cinema seats and things where they automatically flip up when you stand up? Stuart had been sitting in there, I think it was Stuart, and when he stood up it went up and then he turned around and the seat was back down. Now there's no way that seat can go down without a force pulling it down. That did get me, and you could see the seat staying down on its own accord, so that could only really be described as paranormal because those seats don't stay down without a weight on them. So I don't know what you want to think of that, but I think it's kind of creepy. Also, um, Jason, Vet, and somebody else, <laughs> um, me and my rubbish bag, I can't remember who it was, but there was three of them, and they saw a pair of ghostly lights on the stairway, and they bolted back. Now all three of them saw them, and Jason saw them, and Jason is, as I said, a skeptic. He, he will try and look for other solutions, and he said he saw them. So. It was quite exciting that bit. But yeah, in all a really, really good episode, something I really enjoyed, very, very fascinating. Love the character of Joseph Grimaldi, I think his name was, who um, is the father of the clowns. Really quite interesting character, I thought that was great. Number 11, beep. 
is Lep Castle. I was looking forward to that because it's in Ireland and I love the Irish accent. So I was really quite looking forward to that. Um, it's a lot of rubbish. <laughs> I'm sorry but it really is the biggest load of rubbish I've ever seen. Really dull, just not exciting in the slightest. Number 12 is Charnock Hall. Yeah, I really quite like this one. It wasn't too good but there were some bits that I really liked. The cover up by itself. You have the story of a small adventurous little boy who roamed around. Um, there was a heavy influence on reincarnation and the reincarnation in a black cat who perhaps used to live there in a past life and this black cat found its way to this house. You, you, you could see a picture, there was a clip of the black cat and I just thought it was so cute. I love the black kitty. Um, yep. Okay, that's weird. Um, it was set in the 1400s. Um, there was monks on the site. This was pre the building. And yeah, it was, it was an alright effort. I quite enjoyed part of it. But it wasn't as engaging as some of the others. Number 13 is The Mermaid Inn. Quite a good episode, yeah. I'm sorry, can you hear that noise outside? It's, it's really weird. It's like a buzzing noise. It's irritating, to be honest. Um, the bit I like about number 13 is that you have the witch ball in the corner of the inn. Um, kind of like a crystal ball, but it hangs on the roof. Um, love that. Uh, the whole story of the, ho of the Hawkist, Haw 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 Hawkehurst gang. Um, of smugglers, I thought it was kind of nice. I like it when you get the kind of sinister spirits and sinister stories. But it, it was an alright episode, nothing too exciting happened, nothing that made me go, oh holy cow, what was that? But it was really, really good. Um, number 14 is Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Oh my goodness, I was so excited for this one. I love theme parks. I, I'm scared of theme parks, to be honest. Not in the day, but if you walk through a theme park at night when all the rides are shut off and there's nobody around, it's the most scary thing ever. I'm scared. I'm also scared of broken down rides and um, broken down arcade machines. One of my biggest phobias. They just make me feel really sick, really weird. But so that really gave this episode an edge as it is. But I thought it was really fascinating. I'd love to go to Blackpool Beach, um, and now I really, really want to go after this episode. So you have the haunted gift shop, which I thought was quite interesting. Not too much happened there. In fact, nothing really happened at all. But it was really fascinating how you had three crumbs. Three children, um, Cynthia, Caroline and Toby there, which would have been quite fascinating if they'd shown themselves. Most of it though was done inside the ghost train. Um, there was a couple of ghosts there apparently that Derek picked up on. The first one was Cloggy, who had apparently um, Joseph, Joseph Emberton, I think his name was, it apparently rebuilt it, but he was called Cloggy. Um, no, James was called Cloggy and Joseph Ember rebuilt it. Sorry, my notes are scrappy and misleading myself. So James used to work there, but he was kind of a nasty character. And I thought if you had the nickname Cloggy, you'd sound quite a fun character, but he turned out to be quite evil. Um, then you have Joseph Emberton who rebuilt the train. Uh, sounded quite an alright guy, nothing wrong with him. And then the third one was the other train builder, Mr. Kamaya, I want to say it's pronounced, um, who was the original person who built the train before it was rebuilt and renamed. So you have kind of contrasting spirits there, some of them from the same sort of levels, some from different. The only thing about this episode, it sounded really good, like a perfect formula for perfection really, is that there was no orbs, no real activity happened, they did a small seance in the shop, nothing happened, there was just no activity, yet for some reason it was so excited, bless her, Marcel was totally terrified, as she always is in these episodes. But it was, it was just, it was really, really, really enjoyable. I think because it was set in a theme park, I got a bit excited and I was like, I want to go there. So I do want to go on the ghost train in Blackpool Pleasure Beach and start shouting with these spirits and see what happens. That'd be quite fun. But generally, I've watched this episode again and again, even though nothing happened, which is a weird concept because, as I said, nothing happened. But it's good, yeah. Okay, so I'm actually filming the second half of this video nearly two weeks after I filmed the first bit because I kind of did record the, the last three episode reviews and then I lost the file, completely deleted it. I have a really bad habit of doing this. So we have a couple more to go through. So first of all, episode 15 of Most Haunted is um, Charles of the Forest Castle. When I first started watching this, and we were the first 10 minutes in, sorry, this DVD is getting on my nerves, there we go. I was excited. I was like, this looks really, really good. It looks really fun. It looks really informative. Mm, it's, um, it was. It was really, a really sort of interesting, really educational, 
really good from a historical point of view. For a historian, really fantastic. I am a history nut, you guys know this. I've probably mentioned this in the first half of this video, but I can't remember because it was ages ago. And I loved it. But as far as the paranormal activity side of it goes, I was kind of like, eh, bit rubbish. Not much happened, wasn't very scary, as I said, very interesting. The spirit entities that were that talked to Derek, that came to Derek, interesting, just not scary. I do find the ones that are scary better. But it, it was a nice watch, I did enjoy it. You know, I didn't sit and think, hurry up, this is boring. It was okay. Then we have 16, which is um, Mitchell and Priory, which was the pilot episode from what's haunted. Now, pilot, 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 pilot? pilot episodes are always really quite fantastic because sometimes they're never as good, they're a bit rocky, they're finding their feet, it's a new fresh idea and you know shows take time to progress and flourish and blossom into something beautiful but it was actually kind of good, yeah! Now obviously they didn't know what they were doing as such because it was a pilot episode, it was very new to them they had no idea if it was going to get picked up at that stage but it was great, there was no sign of nerves, not even from any of the crew or anything and it flew, it flew, it flew, it, it flowed really well um, most of the crew were still there that carried on going through, which is nice. And the story itself was really good as well. They still had Derek brought in there. There was no sort of in future episodes we will do this. They they still had they had Derek straight away there. So obviously Derek did something right. I wish they'd stop being nasty about Derek. Derek could be the reason why Most Haunted got picked up. We don't know. Um, and he picked up on a little girl named Rosemary, who was apparently four and a half years old, four and a bit, he said. Um, and she had, she liked her dollies. Oh, she she seemed like such a lovely little girl. Um, I'm quite sad. Yeah, Yvette looked so different. I mean, even on the where is it the cover there, she has a lot more hair there than she does um, in the pilot episode. I just prefer Yvette with long, bright blonde hair than I do short, dark hair. That's just a personal preference. It, you know, I I love Yvette. I do, but I prefer her when she has a longer hair because I like longer hair than I do shorter hair. Um, yeah, really, really, good, really, really great pilot episode. Had that been the first ever episode of Most Haunted I'd seen, I would have been like, yeah, brilliant, we're going to watch the full series. But obviously, I, I think the first one I saw was possibly Pendle Hill, or it was an episode where coal was thrown at Calf, and I don't know which episode that was, I don't think I've really seen it, but a piece of coal was launched at Calf. That's all I remember about the first episode I saw. But yeah, if I'd seen this one first, it would have been great. Then you have episode 17 and 18, which is Compilation 1 and Compilation 2, which is just basically um, a look at Yvette and the team's sort of favourite moments from throughout the series, and sort of the scariest bits and the best bits and the bits they liked and the bits they enjoyed. Yeah, really good. Um, worth a watch, but if you just watched the entire series, it's a bit of a drag. But if when you look back at it, it's alright, I think. So that's okay. Then you have episode 19, the last episode, which is Levin's Hall. Um, this was apparently a one hour special because apparently we had asked for a longer Most Haunted episode so they gave us this one hour special with Levin's Hall. Now, when you take, it account, the, take into account the adverts that would have aired, it was only 45 minutes long. And when you put the DVD in, it is only 45 minutes long. So it's not actually an hour long episode, it's just because with the, episode, with the adverts it would have been. But every episode on this DVD is 45 minutes long because it's got all the unseen bits in it, which I imagine, obviously I don't remember this, but I imagine would have aired with, when it aired on TV, the unseen bits wouldn't have been in it, and then they put the unseen bits on the DVD. So the episodes are still 45 minutes long anyway. So this hour episode, 45 minute episode, doesn't really have any special thing about it when it's on the DVD, but I imagine going from a half hour episode on TV, which would have only been like, what, 20 something minutes with the advert, turn it into technically an hour long episode would have been quite a nice leap, because I don't think they can cover all the ground they can cover in half an hour, especially with some of the episodes. Some of them, the really rubbish ones, I'm like, you could have done this in 10 minutes. But the really, really good ones, the ones I love, the ones that are constantly in my mind, for example, Mary King's Close, or, um, Blackpool Pleasure Beach or la 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 other ones, Pendle Hill, I'll just stick with Pendle Hill because I like that one those ones you could not do in half an hour but some of them, yeah, you know but no, it's a really really good box set so I'm going to pop that back in there because it doesn't need to be out it's definitely worth getting hold of, not that expensive I mean I've had this forever um, but you can get it quite cheaply if, if I were to be buying series 1 now I'd buy the new look box set because this is quite thick and chunky and it's just not as attractive as 
some of the newer ones, but I mean it's alright, you know, you've got a little map on the back and there things, but yeah, definitely worth getting hold of if you're 15 or over, I have to point that out before somebody starts screaming at me, you told my kid to buy it, they're only 10, don't watch this video if you're 10, bit late, but <laughs> yeah, so please don't forget to leave comments on series 1, my series 2 video will be up, um, 17th, 20th, so far it'll be up on the 20th, I have a strict video schedule, but sometimes it gets a bit messed up. Yeah, but please feel free to leave comments on that, and that's it for just now, so I'll see you all next time. Bye!